Good morning, it's Valerie Holdren. Um, I didn't expect to be coming back to you so soon, but um, this morning I decided that I wanted to make a batch of hot processed soap. Um, I originally, my when I first learned to make soap, it was cold process, and a dear friend, um, I had bought her soap for a while and expressed an interest and she said, well, would you like for me to teach you? And I said, I'd love it. So we went down and spent the afternoon having lunch and <clears throat> making soap. And I may have told you this before, but for the newcomers, if you haven't, you know, seen my former videos, um, one day I was scrolling through the internet looking for different scents and ways to make soap and I came across hot process soap making or crock pot soap making as it was called. And I'm thinking, wow, what, what is this all about? So I started studying it and um, a couple days later, went to the grocery store. I found a recipe online, which I don't always recommend uh, doing that like I did. You first need to learn to use soap calc and so that you know if you're, <clears throat> excuse me, getting a good formula. Anyway, I went to the grocery store and bought, this one called for a lot of Crisco. So I ran to the store, got Crisco, made my first batch of crock pot soap, and it was a uh, coffee soap. And um, I was hooked and I, I didn't look back. Um, until a few years ago, a couple years ago, this is my sixth year of soap making. Um, and I just kind of felt burnout, you know, and, and a lot has happened in my personal life uh, with my family. And I just couldn't get back into the swing of things, it seemed. And as I was gearing up to restock my Christmas soaps one year, I thought, I'm gonna try hot process, I mean, I'm sorry, heat transfer method. I've seen it done numerous times on YouTube videos, and I love it. I love it for a change, um, especially if I need to put out two or three batches in one day. Um, that's the way to go, and um, I just, that is my second favorite. But some days, I just need to cook soap. Some days, it's it's so comforting to stand over your crock pot and watch it simmer and boil and go through the the changes of the stages and the phases and it's just something comforting about it and today for some reason is one of those days for me. So I'm just sporting my new apron as well. A customer of mine evidently found this online and brought it to me and it's like soap making. That's what I do. I know things and I love it. I don't know that much, but I was just so tickled when I opened this up and saw it. So I'm going to be sporting it. I am going to take the hoops around this way so I can hang a cloth over it uh, to wipe my hands on. But anyway, today's soap is um, oatmeal and lavender. Um, I've not ever videoed this one before. I don't even know that I've ever made this uh, version of it. Um, it's a very basic, simple soap. Um, it's very good for sensitive skin um, because it has a lot of olive oil, a lot of shea butter. Let me get my recipe. And I'm in my kitchen again today where it's brighter. So um, my recipe today is 6% um, castor oil, 19% coconut, I'm using 3% stearic acid, 47% um, olive oil, 17% shea butter, and 8% cocoa butter. Now I am trying really hard um, to use minimal oils. And that is because things are going up all over the place, not just at the gas pumps, not just at the grocery stores, 
but I bought a four ounce bottle of fragrance oil three weeks ago. The fragrance oil was 10 something, which I didn't have a problem with that, but the shipping was $15. I did have a problem with that, but I needed it. Um, so I'm going to be carrying less scents um, unless they are special order because if they don't sell well, they just sit on the shelf and that's a waste. Um, and I hate to have to inflict that on my customers, especially those who have been loyal and faithful since I began six years ago. Um, but it's pricey out there. I'm sure you know that. And um, so I'm going to be experimenting less with different scents and um, simply because of the cost. Um, you know, even, even if I did a small one pound test batch, if it doesn't move well, that's still a waste. So I'm gonna try to focus on those that I know are going to go well and I'm going to, um, with each season, as I said on the last video, I, I plan to bring in a couple of seasonal ones. Um, and if they take off well and people want those, then I'll add those to the inventory. And I'll get rid of another one that didn't move so well. It's just what we have to do. Um, so anyway, today, I'm sorry I got off track. But um, I'm going to be adding a whole egg. I'm going to, once my oils get heated, I'm going to take a few out and put them in this bowl. And then I'm going to temper my egg in so that it doesn't scramble when I put it into my hot oils. Um, that helps with richness and, and lather. Um, it, it's, it really does help. I'm going to be adding lots of honey at the end, apple cider vinegar, um, sodium lactate. I'm not going to add any yogurt today simply because I'm not going to be doing a swirl. It's just going to be a plain bar of oatmeal soap. And on the top, I have um, some little lavender petals and some pulverized oats that I'm just going to sprinkle across the top. Very basic, homey, bar, wonderful for the skin soap. I'm also going to be adding oat milk at the end. I love oat milk. Um, so I don't really need it fluid um, because I'm not going to be doing any swirl. Just want a basic bar of soap. So right now I have my um, oils heating in my crock pot right there. And you see over into the other side of my house. Um, I, I did straighten up a bit this morning, um, and it's probably going to take, I don't know, I would guess 30 minutes or so, and then we'll be back and get started making our oatmeal and lavender soap. Okay, my oils are at 155. Um, I have taken um, two of the big serving spoons and scooped out some of my oils, and now I'm going to be taking a large egg, which equals um, 1.85 ounces when I measured it. So this I deducted from my lye liquid. Um, so now I'm going to be taking this large egg, it's a whole egg, and I'm going to be slowly incorporating it into these warm oils so that I can put it into my batter and not have them scramble, hopefully. So, we'll get that started and I'll let you watch me. I have my lye already mixed up. It's extremely hot. It's at 200 degrees right now. So I'm just stirring in a little bit at a time. My chickens give me eggs every day. <laughs> and I, I don't always use them. Once in a while, I'll um, use them in my oatmeal soap or my shampoo bars. 
but I'm just, like I said, adding it slowly so hopefully they don't curdle. <clears throat> Tempering, that's what it's called, tempering. And if you hear noise in the background, I'm one, I don't watch a lot of TV, but I like the noise. I have it on pretty low though, so I hope it doesn't disturb you. The other day I was watching, um, well, in the background, I think it, I watch old shows. I love the old TV shows, TV movies. I don't like this new, all, all these criminal minds and dark shows. I just don't like them. I never have. They give me the creeps. It's enough meanness in the world now. Give me Leave it to Beaver and Bewitched and <laughs> Gilligan's Island. <laughs> okay. Now, that's done. I'm gonna set those to the side. Pull back over my oils. And I, I went ahead and turned my crock pot off because my oils were so hot. Um, and using the steric acid, it, it very well may, um, you know, volcano quickly especially with my lye being so hot. Okay, they're at 161 and that's off. So, I'm gonna go ahead and just slowly start adding these in with my stick blender. There's no um, lie in here yet, so there's no chance of me getting it too thick right now, which doesn't make a lot of difference with hot process anyway. I, you know, if you go a while and forget to do and don't do something, it's like you really have to stop and think. <clears throat> like as I was going through my list of things, I realized that I had not measured out my additional super fat. So I had to go back downstairs and get it measured out. <clears throat> That's the beauty. One of the beauties of hot process is that you can add the super fat as much as you want afterwards. Um, this one I have done 5% up front in the recipe and an additional 2% after, and that's going to be jojoba oil. I didn't have any oat oil, or I would have used that. Okay, and these are at 188. So here we go, and this may, like I said, volcano quickly because of the heat and the steric acid. So I'm just gonna add it slowly. And it probably will get thick because of the steric acid. I love that color. My chickens lay such rich eggs. And in my oils, while I was feeding them, I had my kale and clay and uh, colloidal oatmeal. And I'm just gonna bring this to a thick trace and then I'll cut it off. Um, until it comes to its next stage. 
And that's a thin trace. It didn't get thick like I thought it was going to. A lot of times when I use steric acid, it, it gets really thick quickly in volcanoes. It's at 169. I'm going to cut it back up to low. I love the smell of soap at this stage. And I love this little stick blender. It's called, it's a Syncor. And it's, it's not overly powerful. I like it particularly when I'm using, uh, when I'm doing the heat transfer method and I want to keep my batter a little more fluid. Okay, that's a pretty trace. Tell you something I did forget to bring up here is my spray bottle that I used to spray down my sides with. I'm gonna have to go and get that once I'm sure that this isn't gonna come up out of the pot. That's so pretty and creamy. Just a beautiful buttery yellow. It's now 12.30 p.m. And we'll see how long this takes to rise up. It's been about six minutes and it is starting to uh, rise up. It's getting that souffle effect is what it always reminds me of, is a souffle that's rising. Um, it, it's been, like I said, six minutes, and it didn't act at all the way I thought it would. Um, I really thought with the steric acid in it, even though it was only 3%, um, And some people don't adhere or believe in calling hot process these stages that they go through. It doesn't mean that it's a technical name to call this applesauce. That's not what it means. It, what, why we say applesauce or potato or Vaseline is simply a guide. Um, to know, okay, this is normal for my soap to look like applesauce. Okay, it's normal for my soap to look like mashed potatoes. Um, all that's normal. It doesn't mean it's a technical term, and some people get really bent out of shape about it. Um, but it's just a term that many of us use to describe what we are seeing in the pot. Um, so, and not all soaps will go through that, but the majority of soaps do. Um, at least mine have, and maybe it's my formula, I don't know. But um, when I tell you that it has reached applesauce stage, it's because if you look, that looks like applesauce. It looks like you would just pour applesauce out in a bowl. So that's why it's referred to like that, not because it's a technical soap making term. Now, I did go down while I was waiting because things were moving pretty smoothly and get my hot water, my bottle. 
so that I can spray, and it's hot water, my sides. And that just keeps the excess soap from, you know, falling off into the soap and um, not being able to get a smooth look on your bars. That's a really good trick that I learned from Valerie Mosher. So, it is now 20 minutes until 1, and I will come back when it goes through its next phase. It's been about three minutes, and it's starting to rise up a little bit, but I wanted you to see um, it also has a good bit of um, separation, but what this looks like is happening to me is it's going to fold over on itself, which this is not going to be as fast of a cook as I had thought. Um, this is just going to be, you know, a moderately uneventful cook, and that's, that is fine. But this, these sides are trying to fold up over the middle, and that's another good sign. Um, so I'm just going to give it a stir because I don't, I'm trying to get the separation out of it. And I can take my stick blender and do it, but I'm just going to use the whisk and see what happens. I'm just in love with that color. And that's because of the egg. So this is going right into mashed potato. Um, and it's hot enough that I'm gonna cut it off and let it finish cooking without the added heat. The cooking unit will keep it quite warm. See, that looks like mashed potatoes. So, now, I think I'm gonna do the rest of it with this. These heavy duty spatulas from Steph's Micahs, I just love them. And it is trying to come up out of the pot. So just keep stirring. And I'm going to just give it a little mist of this hot water. And that helps contain things too. And I anticipate you're just going to see this go right over into applesauce. If I can keep my arm going long enough to keep it from coming up out of the pot. Now it's when it's wanting to get wild on me. And it's starting to transition over into Vaseline. Thick Vaseline. You can see the transparency. And that's what they mean when they say Vaseline. It's translucent. I'm gonna give it another spray. Keep those crusties off of the side. And I have my heat off. And I'm gonna let it sit just for a couple of minutes. I'm gonna wash this off just in case it has some lie left on the some uncooked batter left and um, then we'll come back and add our additives and that total cook 
took about 15 minutes. See, it's been so long since I've done hot process. It's been several months. I almost forgot to do my zap test. And I'm, anyway, I'm glad I remembered. And it is completely neutral, so I took off my gloves. There's no lie left. Um, I'm gonna spray down my sides one more time because I'm getting ready to stir in my additives, which are over on the stove in a little frying pan. So the first thing I'm going to add is going to be my additional super fat, which is jojoba. Okay. I love that golden color. So in goes the super fat. The next thing that I'm gonna add is going to be my um, oat milk. And I made this. I just soaked um, oatmeal, about three tablespoons, in about a half a cup, three quarters of a cup of water, hot water. And I let it sit for a couple of hours and then strained it off. And I'm at 183. So, let me, um, hang on a second. I'm gonna take this out so it's not, I don't have to reach up as high. Now, and this is two and a half ounces of oat milk. And I'm going to add it slowly. And I'm not going to be able to add my um, honey and apple cider vinegar and fragrance until it's down to at least 175. Because I don't want it to scorch. Oh, that, it would smell really good, the honey would, with this soap, but I'm not. And as I said, it's a thick Vaseline. I did do a little water discount with this one. Um, it's 36% water, simply because I wasn't gonna be doing any swirls. And I wanted more of a rustic look. And it's just gonna be the natural color. I'm not adding any colorant to it. And my sodium lactate is with my, it's in with my honey and my apple cider vinegar. When I check the temperature, I always bring it up from the bottom to get an accurate reading, a more accurate reading. It says it's at 177, so I'm gonna cover this up, spray down my sides again, and um, probably wait about five minutes and come back, and I think we should be ready to add the rest of the additives and mold it. Okay, because I didn't have any yogurt, I did realize I had some heavy whipping cream. So this is my honey, my apple cider vinegar, and my sodium lactate. So what I did was took a table, two tablespoons of heavy cream and put it into these hot additives. And that's the way I'm gonna see, get some more benefits of some more creaminess. And this was at, I think it was like 175. 
It says 166, but I don't know that I trust that. But there was my honey. There were three tablespoons of honey, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, two tablespoons of um, heavy cream, and one tablespoon of sodium lactate. Mm, that smells good, just as it is. But you can see how that thins things right down. If you wanted to swirl, I could, but I'm not going to. I just want a plain Jane bar of great for the skin soap. And you can see how spraying my sides has kept them clean. There aren't any heavy bits of soap. Okay. Now, the only thing I need to add now is my fragrance. And it says I'm 168, so we're good. grab my mold, which I had heating in the oven. I just had the light on. In goes my fragrance, which is Lavender 4042 and Bulgarian Lavender. Nice combination. Smells loverly, as they say. <laughs> My granddaddy would used to say loverly. Okay. Now we're going to pour it into our mold. Never fails. My nose starts itching. Do this and help get some air bubbles out. And then I'll bang it down too, but this helps. going to be so gentle. The, the, the sweetness of the honey, the creaminess with the little tartness of the lavender. I'm going to save enough of that to use at my sink. I always like to have a nice little sample bar to try. Okay. Now, just gonna bang this down. Now, I'm going to spray the top. Not that I'm really going to do anything, but I want to be able to um, make a little trench. Hear my dog out there. 
She hears me in here. Just want to give it a little bit of texture on top. Not much, just a little. Okay. Now, I'll sprinkle my lavender buds and oatmeal on top just for some color. I pulverized this oatmeal in my um, food processor, my mini food processor. I have one just for soap making. I think I paid $20 for it. And that's it. Lavender oats. Thank you for watching and there'll be pictures um, after I cut it. Take care. Okay, well my sample bar is still a little too runny to make into a ball. So I took a little bit off of the thing. You wouldn't believe the um, bubbles that were in my crock pot when I took it back downstairs and ran water in it. Anyway, just gonna do a little lather test here with this. And it is so creamy. It's just, it's bubbly, but it's very creamy. Um, well, there's the bubbles. <laughs> I mean, it's just, and a lot of that is the egg and the honey. Um, the milk. The heavy cream, I mean, I'll take it, and it smells wonderful. So, you know, that was a little bit of an experiment for me because when I don't do hot process as much as I used to, my yogurt goes bad on me, but I usually have heavy cream or half and half. So I added just two tablespoons of that, like I would the yogurt, to my hot honey. And I got the fluidity and this creamy lather.